Hi, in this video I'm going to talk about how to enjoy the sun during breast cancer and its treatment. One of the things that you'll hear when you're going through breast cancer treatment is stay away from the sun. That can be really hard for people who enjoy the sun on their skin, the way it feels, they enjoy the warmer weather. So I thought I'd give you some ways that you can safely enjoy the sun. Much of what I say applies to people regardless of whether or not they have breast cancer. If you have kids or younger siblings, you can pass this on to them. What do we know about sun? Well, basically tanning is skin damage, and if you burn, you can imagine looking at me that I might burn, and indeed I do, um, that is that we're damaging the skin. And sun exposure can lead to premature aging like wrinkles um, and also skin cancer. There's some good things about sun exposure, including vitamin D synthesis, which occurs because we get exposed to the sun. So it's the, a lot of people view this as a bit of a balance. The thing is, the older we get, the less efficient our skin is as, at making vitamin D through use of the sun, which is why you'll notice in our other videos, we talk about taking vitamin D supplements. It's really hard to make enough through our skin. So after about the age of 30, we should consider vitamin D supplements if you use sun protection, uh, skin protection for, against the sun, which I do recommend. I'm not a dermatologist, but uh, I do care a lot about um, people not getting cancers from their own lifestyle when it's avoidable. In Australia, they've done a lot of um, public campaigns to decrease the incidence of skin cancer and they've been very successful. They've used billboards to advise people to use sunscreen. So we know from the level of data at a whole country that these things are helpful. So yes, we do want some sun, especially when we're younger, and then sunscreen uh, after 10 minutes or so ex of exposure for your kids. And then for you, if you're um, approaching 30 or over 30, you're really not getting any of that vitamin D benefit through your skin. You should be considering supplements. You can talk with your doctor or a registered dietitian about vitamin D supplements. So let's talk about how we can protect ourselves from the sun. Well, the obvious way we always think about is sunscreen or sunblock. And a lot of these are incredibly effective not at completely reducing any skin damage, but by increasing the amount of time we can be out in the sun before we see sun damage. So even if you put on SPF 10,000, which there isn't, by the way, um, you still can't be out infinitely. So let's use a more reasonable number of SPF 30. What that means is you can increase your exposure to the sun by 30, 3, 30 times more than you could have without it. So if you burn in 10 minutes, it's going to let you uh, be out in the sun longer and you won't burn until 300 minutes. So it protects you. After SPF 30, the cost of the product goes up and the benefit really doesn't. It levels out at about SPF 30. So if you're inclined to use sunscreen, which again, I recommend, um, SPF 30 is good enough and expensive enough. Sunblock tends to contain zinc and it's a little bit more effective. I recommend that people use sunblock on the backs of their hands, on their décolletage, this part of the body, neck and face when they're out in the sun. Uh, to protect yourselves from the effects of sun damage to the skin. There are people who cannot wear sunscreen or sunblock. They have an allergy to the products or they're not comfortable putting a chemical on their body. Everybody's different and you have to weigh the risks and benefits. Although we have identified the components of sunscreen in the bloodstream of people who use it, we haven't yet demonstrated that these are active molecules that mess around with DNA in the cells and cause cancer. But uh, a lot of people like to avoid any unnecessary exposure 
to any types of chemicals. So what can you do? Well, there's hats and um, this is really interesting in countries and cities where there's a lot of skin cancer. They show the broader the brim of your hat, the lower the likelihood of getting skin cancer on your face or neck. So instead of a small hat, consider getting a big floppy hat to protect yourself. That is actually very effective. We might think staying in the shade would be really effective, that if you're out of the sun or if it's a cloudy day, that you're not getting exposed to sun, but that's actually not true. If you are near a reflective surface and you're, let's say, under the shade of a tree, the sun will be reflected off the ground. If you're in an urban environment or areas with paved roads, the roads will reflect the sunlight. So don't assume that you're protected. Other things you can do is wear SPF clothing. Not particularly cheap, but you can find uh, SPF 30 shirts that you can wear over your body. It tends to miss. Uh, the area top part of the chest and the neck but um, you can find in a consignment shop you can find use clothes that are still effective at blocking the sun and just making sure you don't have a lot of unexposed areas you can also carry an umbrella lots of folks do that you want a light colored umbrella which will reflect the sun's rays back up into the atmosphere instead of absorbing them into your, um, into your body. So all the different ways you can avoid sun exposure. Let's talk specifically about why this matters to you. You've never worried about it before. Why am I bringing this up in a breast cancer video? For a couple of reasons. One is that some chemotherapy agents make us much more sensitive to the sun. We don't always know which ones those are in a given person. And what you don't want to do is have an additional adverse effect of chemotherapy because you've been out in the sun. So I'm hoping that makes sense. There are drugs that we know are, are photosensitizers and you're, that'll be on the chemotherapy information sheet. But we don't know if that's the case for other medications, other chemotherapy drugs, and they may not be marked photosensitizers, uh, but they may have some sensitizing effect. In addition, if you've had radiation therapy to the chest wall, uh, the chest area, the area above your collarbone, if you get sun exposure to those areas, you can actually have much more toxicity from the sun uh, in addition to the radiation. Remember, radiation burns, and you can watch our video on what to expect with radiation. That uses high energy waves to treat cancer, but the biggest toxicity is at the level of the skin in addition to fatigue and some other side effects. So I've covered a lot ways to uh, use SPF, where to use it, wearing hats, wearing clothes, using an umbrella, staying away from the sun, which is so sad if you're a sun seeker, um, and also being mindful that when you're on chemotherapy or radiation therapy, your skin may be particularly sensitive. And also, forgot to mention, if you lose your hair, you no longer have the protection of your hair for your scalp, so wearing a hat or a scarf, a turban, would be particularly important because your skin there has not ever seen the sun except for maybe when you're a baby. And so the skin of your scalp will be particularly sensitive to burning. If you have less hair and you've had more sun exposure, you probably know this already, that you tend to burn. People have noted to me that their, the part in their hair can burn on a very sunny day. So like most things, the sun is both good and bad, and it's a balance between the two. I hope this has been helpful. If you're interested in learning about what parts of treatment I've mentioned might be part of your treatment plan, go to yerba.com, drop a comment below or a question. We try to get back to you within the week or 10 days at the most, and like and subscribe this video if it's been helpful. What that does is it helps other people who might find this helpful, find the video. It's just the way YouTube works.